In this video, we'll talk about solving multi-step equations. So let's jump right into an example. So we've talked about solving single-step equations, and if you haven't checked out that video yet, highly, highly recommend that you do. But okay, we're going to talk about multi-step. So if we're looking at the left side of our equation here, we have some x's and we have, we're adding to it, we're multiplying them. But okay, I, I probably am going to undo the multiplication with some division at some point, and I'm probably going to undo the addition with some subtraction at some point. But how do I know what order to do it in? And if we think about PEMDAS, well, the way it's written here, I started with a number, let's call it x, I multiplied it, that was my first step. And then I added 1. That was my second step. So it makes sense that I'm going to undo that. So the last thing I did was I added. So I'm going to undo the subtraction. And the second to last thing was the multiplication. So then I'm going to do the division. Now basically I'm going to be following order of operations backwards. So the first thing I'm going to do is undo the addition. So we're going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. So then 2x, just 2x, is going to equal 8. Okay. Now we can divide by 2, because that was the first thing we did, technically, to our x. So we'll divide both sides by 2. We can do that and maintain the equality. So x is going to be 4, and that would be the solution to our equation. Now they get more complex, as we'll see here in a second. But this idea of following order of operations backwards, very, very important. So let's look at one that's a little more complicated. Technically, if I look at this quotient here, there is an unspoken, unwritten set of parentheses that goes in the numerator of a fraction, also in the denominator if there's something to be had there. So the idea is, I took a number, x, I added 1 to it. There's my first step. Then I multiplied that sum by 3. There's my second step. And then I divided that product by 2. There's my third step. So now I'm going to undo some stuff. We're going to undo this one first. That was technically the last thing I did to x to make the 7. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. I can do that and still maintain the equality. So then we're going to get 3 times x plus 1 equals 14. Now when you have an expression like this with the 3x plus 1, or the 3 times x plus 1, you can distribute and then treat it just like we did in our last example, or we could undo the multiplication right now. And we can do that by dividing both sides by 3, leaving me just x plus 1 on the left side, which is going to equal 14 thirds. And I'm going to leave it as a fraction because fractions are just fine. And now we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So ultimately, x is going to equal 14 thirds minus 1. Now we can simplify this right side a little bit. I'm going to rewrite 1 as 3 thirds, and then we can take 14 minus 3, so x is going to equal 11 thirds. And that is just fine for a solution. It's exact, it's precise, and sure, it's a fraction, but it's just fine. That's what x is. It's a value. And there's another example, a little more complicated, just undoing what we did to x. So sometimes the reverse order of operations, it can help get you started, but every now and then it helps to think about, okay, I started with x, and then what did I do with it? And then once you've done that, just kind of work it backwards. Undo what you did.